What it is, what's good, happy Friday, how's everybody doing? It's BT back with yet another podcast, um, Bright Tape Podcast in full effect, going live on stage, going hard in the paint, um, doing a little bit of different flow today, it's um, uh, early early flow, 10 in the morning, uh, got some Grimecraft going in the background, shout out to Grimecraft, um, met him in person at, at MAGFest um, a month ago, and I have been given the power and our ability to use music from them so i'm gonna start making it happen um i'm gonna i'm working on another one i'm just being patient another one um but i have some tidbits and topics that i wanted to kind of jump into today and it's coincidental playing some grime craft since he's into music and he does do a bit of gaming wanted to kind of jump around and get into a few of the latest stories involving the video game community because I've been very, 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 very quiet and I don't, anybody who knows me knows I don't like to have a quiet slash stale podcast because it's just not my way of functioning. So uh, I wanted to come back and at least let everyone know that I'm still alive. I'm still here. I've literally been in mental grind mode for good reason. So it's like I want you all to know that your efforts and help and motivation and drive has not been in vain because I'm just literally busting my chops to just make stuff kind of flow and just be what it's going to be. So we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into it. Uh, So most of my PS4 heads do know that Street Fighter Five came out a few weeks ago. And in so many words, it's just literally taken over the community of gaming. Uh, there have been quite a few tournaments. Uh, I wish I could go to the Street Fighter tournament in Evo at Evo in Las Vegas. But not all dreams can come true. Maybe that'll be on my agenda and itinerary for next year. Uh, we just had to wait and see and let what life let life leads lead its way accordingly. So um I'm doing I'm talking about Street Fighter because the game has been just a phenomenal game to watch being played. And if I had a PS4, I probably would play it. But you know how that goes. So uh, I've been kind of diving into reading a little bit of information. And it turns out it looks as though uh, there will be a new character coming to Street Fighter five. Um, those who are old school will probably remember him from 1997's version of Street Fighter 3. Um, our guy's name is Alex. So he's going to be released on Street Fighter 5. The first question a lot of my friends are probably going to ask, or a lot of my listeners probably will probably figure out is, hey, when's, when is Kanye coming? Of course, as with anything, we don't know. Just like he blindly decided to kind of mini music plug. Sorry. Uh, When he decided to have his random moment of um, he wants to make all of his music go digital. I really feel like that's going to be a music podcast that I really want to chime into and dive into. So I will definitely have that as a queued up topic to, to jump into and to get, you know, a few mind and brains going. So that is going to be a huge release for Street Fighter 5. Uh, let me see. I might be lucky to get a date if I don't. Uh, okay, so it's an update for March. Um, as far as the exact date release, as of yesterday, they do not have a release date for when he's going to be out. But trust me, when he when that news starts to get circulated, it's going to be known and it'll be definitely a character that a lot of the true gamers are going to want to learn about and get acquainted with using. So that's one of my topics that i have the next topic that i wanted to get into because it happened a few weeks ago and i i was able to download the characters but i have yet to play with anybody any of the characters yet pause caught that um i have yet to use any of those characters yet um but mortal kombat xl was released and so i'm going to give you a little bit of a a history as well as a, a backstory behind this so a few years ago, Mortal Kombat X came out. Great game. It's been doing its thing. Uh, it's a unique meta. Um, I want to make sure that this podcast will be promoted because I'm going to do the button mashing podcast soon. 
because I really have someone who I want to do that with and not just kind of do it on my own and think I know what I'm talking about because I don't no need lying and being in now. But the truth is the truth. And uh, I really think the Mortal Kombat community and Street Fighter communities both stand strong behind their game. So that's just kind of the way it is. Um, if you ever go to a tournament or if you ever see a tournament on TV, on Twitch or just in person, all you see is everybody carrying around controllers and letting it be known. Look, I'm down and this is my thing. Uh, so the initial game came out and they had a few characters you could download and that were unlockable through the game. But then they realized that they wanted to make the engine better and add more characters to the game. So four more characters were included as part of the Mortal Kombat XL package. Now, there are two ways you can do this. If you already have the game, my personal preference, spend the $20 and get the extra characters. Do not be dense enough and derp enough to go out and buy Mortal Kombat XL. Now, in my case, it didn't turn out as a bad a bad trade off because I got mine back on Black Friday for forty dollars. So I got black. I got the Black Friday version, forty dollars, paid twenty dollars for the character. So I paid the sixty dollars that I would have paid if I went to a store and bought it currently. Um, but not to ignore or disregard why I'm sharing this information. Um, there are four characters that are that have been released. Uh, Bo Rai Chow tell you now Mortal Kombat new here so bear with me I'm probably gonna get it right but I might have just destroyed that first one um, but Bo Rai Chow is one of them Alien of course if you know Alien vs Predator need I say more uh, you have Triborg who is uh, a from the classic Cyborgs um, he has well he has three variations all corresponding to the three classic Cyborgs um, it's they're, they're mainly the movement and the characters are going to be a little different, but it is what it is. And from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And this is mainly the reason I bought the package is because of Leatherface. Who does not love Leatherface and his goriness of no care in the world? So I really have been summoned and requested to bring Mortal Kombat XL to a get together and make sure that it just becomes what it is and ends up being that epic fail of gaming that everyone is used to and immune to uh so i will definitely be playing that um and giving my little bit of insight about the characters in the gameplay as a whole um the next topic that i want to get into and this is i guess you can say this is somewhat my final topic and i'm kind of gonna do this as a i guess i can make this a spinoff and make this a dedication podcast too because I really don't want to like downplay anyone or anything that's been done to get me to where I am. Um, if you do hear the music, I hope you are able to. Um, like I said, this is this is from Grimecraft, and I will be kind of randomizing the shares and the plays of his music through my podcast because I th- you talking about some music that can get your mind right and your life tight. It, it it's it's that and then some. Um, so. Uh, Back on March the 7th, or March the 8th for some of the gamers, uh, Tom Clancy's The Division came out. Now, to an everyday gamer who doesn't understand that, they look at it like, okay, a game came out. Woo, cool, yay. But anytime a game can come out and exceed views for League of Legends on Twitch, that's huge. Uh, So... It has been released, and so far, uh, I'm gonna so I'm gonna read a quick review. I'm trying. I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna hope this isn't like a, a long-winded essay. Okay, good. Um, you, you just I'm gonna read this, and it'll kind of give like a summation. And I'm gonna go by what I've seen based on gameplay. Uh, I have never seen. Okay, grammatical fails. FYI, read. <laughs> Read and reread and make sure you're prepared for the edits to follow what you read. Uh, But this reviewer said, I've never seen anything like this is what he meant to say. Um, Believe me, the game is super. I've tried so I've tried many games and I don't usually make reviews, but I wanted to tell everyone that this game is awesome. Every aspect of the game, PVP, which is player versus player or PVE, which is player versus everyone. Social hub, 
and how it's very easy to group with others. Oh my God, my wife, she is not an expert at all. And she's doing that, like opening her mail. Odd reference, but hey, to each his own. Um, there is not blah, 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 blah. And you win. No, it's skills, hide, fight, speed, intelligence. Sorry, guys, I'm not expert for doing reviews, but this is really different and unique. But um, to kind of piggyback off of what he said and to kind of make it a simpler terminology for those who have never played the division or well, not even the division, but never played really a Tom Clancy game. This is what you call a tactical based game. There is no. So there, there are various games out there, like, for instance, CSGO, um, a similar Tom Clancy game, which is Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, which came out at the end of the year, um, end of December. I mean, at the end of the end of last year, um, that game. Hang on a moment. All right, I'm sorry about that. Um, so this game has, you know, it's from the same group or the same company who's made Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Now, Rainbow Six Siege is more S and D or search and destroy, and you have a much different flow to the game. With the division, it's more of a running gun game, but the factor behind the running gun is that you have to be online. It's you get a better experience with the game when you're online with people you know. Um, my best comparison and my most direct competitor, well, not competitor, but direct game that kind of mimics the the um, engine and the genetics of the game would probably be um, Destiny. And I think with Destiny, it's like with any game. If you're into it, you're into it. And if you're not, you're not. Um, I will be the first to admit. And I, I tell everybody this story. And this is, I guess it's kind of coincidental that I'm doing the this, the gaming podcast today. Because I haven't really, like I said, I've been kind of out of touch with my console. And I'm sorry, Xbox. Like, I'm looking over at my Xbox like, I'm so sorry. Like, you've been neglected. Forgive me, and I will make it up to you. Uh, I truly have been kind of doing my little Black Ops 3 moments here and there. And that's been, you know, a good little stint here and there. But for the most part, just to mainly have something to just watch or keep up with i've not been as consistent i guess so i'm working on that but anyway um i just i've from from the from the gameplay that i've seen of the division it looks like a good game uh the key element that i've seen or observed with the game and this is always my constant anytime i talk about video games is replay value uh so my to my non-gaming knowledge or gaming based folks i'm going to kind of give you a simple terminology of replay value you go to the store and i'm going to take this back old school you go to the store you pick up mario one the first super mario that came out on nintendo you play it you get a you get so far you play it you may beat it you may not beat it the replay value of it means are you how likely are you to pick that game up again meaning would you pick it up today I mean, would you would you start playing again to, later on today? Would you play it tomorrow? Is it like, okay, I'm done. I beat the game. I want to take it back. Um, I know a lot of people who are professionals at beating a game and literally taking it back like two or three days later. Like with GTA 5, I own GTA 5, have not played it in a while, but I will be the first to admit GTA 5 is that game that can keep your mind occupied in a place that you may or may not be prepared for. So it's kind of like you have to either it's literally like a hate a love hate thing with with um gta 5 but tom clancy's the the division looks like it has a pretty moderate replay value i won't say high uh to me and and you have and you also have to look at it based on communities and based on what games people prefer like you if you took someone who played and i'll get this is the best way to describe it if you took a gamer who played fifa and put them into Tom Clancy. They would be like, okay, I'll play this one time. It looks okay. I'm not really a shooting fan. Put it down. I don't want to play it anymore. I'm done. And that's okay. Uh, there's not really a, a right or wrong way to handle how you do or don't play that game. But it's the, the replay value kind of is like the win or lose of, of the fighting 
or the the um rogue type of gameplay that it offers. But for the most part, I mean the overall scores looks like it's an eight point eight, which in gaming terms is not that bad. I mean it's kind of coincidental because Rainbow Six Siege is a seven point seven. I mean seven point eight. So and I mean that was out in December. So just let that kind of sit in your mind for a little bit. But uh, I I think gaming is kind of getting to that good place. Uh, in a few months, I need to know get the exact date. But um, E3 is coming, so you know it's going to be a lot of pr- press release for some games coming up. Whichever new Call of Duty they decide to do, as long as they don't do Ghost Two, we should be okay. Um, I'm not going to lie, as a nerd and as a gamer, I am ready for um, I'm ready for um, Gears of War Four to come out because. I, I need to get back into my ultimate edition been kind of slipping but hey it is what it is but uh i just think you have to play what you love and i'm kind of upset because and i guess it's a trade-off and I always and I'm, I'm gonna say this and i'm gonna leave it alone um you truly and honestly have this musical or well not musical but you have this game in comparison between two companies such as killer instinct and um street fighter 5 so the coincidental part Mortal Kombat is like in between because they're on both systems um, Mortal Kombat you can get on either Xbox One, PS4 and of course still on PC um, and I'm not and don't him, don't when I say of course PC I'm not saying like of course PC like boo, boo PC because that is the podcast that I want to do as far as online gaming and just the comparisons of how PC gaming is done compared to online gaming or just gaming in general with consoles um, I have not neglected or disregarded that series. I just want to make sure I have everyone and everything in place to to do that topic. Um, anybody who knows me, yeah, I'm not a perfectionist, but when it comes to something of this sort, I truly will admit that it is a an, an ear grabber or an eye attention grabber that you want to make sure you have thoughts, facts, and stories to kind of break down what you're getting into. So, um, yeah, I I truly... You know, realize when Street Fighter Five came out, and they were like, "Yeah, it's going to be a PlayStation exclusive." I said, "Okay." So Street Fighter is doing that to come back to um, Killer Instinct's Xbox One exclusive. And if you go back and look at history, the same thing occurred. If I can recall correctly, Mortal Kombat was on both systems. Street Fighter was more Sega oriented, and uh, Killer Instinct was primarily Super Nintendo based. Hang on one moment. All right, y'all. Sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, I'm throwing a few blind pauses and moments here and there because I just want to make sure that I'm not like leaving or neglecting anything from the discussion, and I don't want you to catch side pieces and storylines that aren't even part of what we're doing. But nonetheless, uh, I hope you all have enjoyed listening. This is kind of an odd way for me to end a podcast, but I'm just telling you all if you want to take part in the fighting community with the different games that are out there um you got street fighter you have mortal Kombat, you have killer instinct if you're into your shooters you have your tom clancy's you have your call of duty um and to go back to your fighting games you have smash if you are not a fan of watching smash or you haven't gotten into smash just just watch it um i can recommend multiple streamers who stream t- on twitch um, I am personally looking to do some streaming on Twitch soon, and I've been kind of quiet about it because I actually just posted my first Twitch stream. Yay, it's kind of awful because I went like, oh, and something. And I don't remember. It was atrocious, um, but I was just kind of messing around with something to do. It was, you know, a chance. I was like, oh, it works. OK, cool. So it is what it is. But just just get out there if you're a gamer and if you're willing to try, it makes it a lot easier. Um, my other suggestion, and this is kind of like a random spin, but it's a legitimate point. Don't be scared to fail in gaming. That's the one thing I've seen that kind of hurts, but yet harms the gaming community is that a lot of people look at it as I'm supposed to get on a game, play it, know how to play it. And I should be the best at it from day one. No, 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 no. That's, that's not how this works. That's, that's just not how it works. You don't just wake up and you're ordained with the title of 
being the best gamer in the world. Like nobody, nobody in any country is ever going to pull off that a massive cheat code ever in life. So just keep that in mind. And um, I hope that you you find your niche in gaming. If you you know, and I say this, and I always harp on it. If you need assistance or help with trying to get a comfort zone of learning where to start with gaming, by all means, by all means, send me um, requests or inquiries. Uh, so I'm gonna end this here. So for any, and this is where I have to do my shameless plug. No, I'm not. Just kidding. Um, this is where I'll be doing my shameless plug. I have some new pages. I am gonna finally go ahead and make those known. Uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook, you can follow me at Brite Podcast. If you are not already following on Instagram, check out Brite Podcast there as well. Um, these podcasts are locked and live on YouTube. Um, well, not live, but you can go back and listen to previous episodes on YouTube. A few of my episodes may be removed soon from uh, from Spreaker uh, because I may have some space issues or i also will possibly be looking to create a new page so just be on the lookout for that uh i'm going to be as universal and as inclined with these posts and presentations as i can because i really want content to be for my listeners not just me just sitting here talking on the mic because i do have some guests coming i'm not just talking and saying okay guests are coming i had i was close to pulling off a cheat code to get a podcast done last night but um, as with anything, you want to make sure you go into it and have it prepped and organized. And I'm, I'm a hundred percent on board with my fan for, you know, presenting that to me. So that's why I truly took a step back and said, let me get it all together, get it prepped, ready, set up and on cue. So, um, I've got that queued up, uh, Evernote, you've been a real MVP. Uh, I can't even think of the girl's name. Uh, but one of my friends who did my she did a design for me. I'm not being rude. I'm taking notes using Evernote. Thank you for this for that. Um, Debt Mo chick or Debt Ma chick. Um, she made that for me, and it's been like my kind of insignia or mark on doing notes and taking information down for anything that I'm doing, especially related to my podcast. So uh, just bring some ideas. If you are looking to bring an idea about doing a podcast or if you would like to be on my podcast or you'd like me to bring the podcast to you, uh, send all inquiries and send all information to Brite podcast at Gmail dot com. Slow dirt moment. Didn't know I had to email. Don't judge. Sis, if you're listening, I will kill you. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but in all in all fairness, I did go ahead and I do have an email address with that. So if you want to send in any in, any topics or. Or any ideas or suggestions and you're not publicly willing to put them on my page. Um, those who are my friends, y'all know how to contact me. Don't act don't act fresh and brand new. I'm not acting fresh and brand new. I'm still the same person I was before I did the podcast. Just saying. Uh so that's where I'm at with that. I hope you all enjoyed. Enjoy the rest of your remaining day of Friday. Have an excellent and awesome, positive, productive, gaming-related, addictive-to-music life of a weekend. And I'll catch you all tomorrow or Sunday, of course, because you know Sunday is going down. Uh, so, until next time, this is BT, Brite Podcast, signing out. Peace. <laughs>